may wake up to a warm sunny day. However, as hours go by, the temperature may drop. Puffy clouds appear in the western sky, and these clouds may soon become overhead and grow tail. But why does the weather suddenly change? Do you want to know more about weather? Come and join me in this fun and learning activity and let's study more about weather disturbances in this atmospheric science episode. Remember that weather is affected by air masses that move across your area. An air mass is a large amount of air that has similar temperature and humidity throughout. For example, an air mass may form over warm ocean water. Now the air mass will be warm and humid. Another air mass may form over cold land. It will be cool and dry. Towering clouds like this would indicate that a storm is coming. It is sunny above the clouds, but it is dark below. Weather changes when one air mass moves over a cold air mass. So we could see cirrus clouds from higher up and then stratus clouds from closer to the ground. There may be some light, steady rain, or snows in some area. Now, cold fronts are cold air mass which moves under a warm air mass. Now, warm air is pushed up along the front. Towering clouds may form and storms may break out. Now, during storms, lightning also flashes. You hear thunder nearby. Oh no! Now, rain begins to pour heavily and off the flood street. Now this is a thunderstorm. A thunderstorm is a rainstorm with thunder and lightning. But do you know what causes these thunderstorms? Now thunderstorm is a violent short-lived weather disturbance that is always associated with lightning. Thunder, dense clouds, heavy rain, or hail. And strong gusty winds are also experienced during thunderstorms. Thunderstorms arise when layers of warm moist air rise in a large swift updraft to cooler regions at the atmosphere. There, moisture contained in the updraft condenses to form towering cumulonimbus clouds and eventually precipitation. Now columns of cooled air then sink earthward striking the ground with strong downdrafts and horizontal winds. Now at the same time, lightning discharges occur when accumulated electric charge becomes sufficiently large and lightning heats the air as it passes through. So intensely and quickly, the shock waves are produced. Now these shock waves are heard as claps and rolls of thunder. Now on occasion, Severe thunderstorms are accompanied by swirling vortices of air that become concentrated and powerful enough to form tornadoes. Now, under certain conditions, a thunderstorm can turn into a tornado. A tornado is a spinning cloud shaped like funnel with winds up to 480 kilometers or 299 miles per hour. Now, as warm air rises or moves up in the thunderhead, air pressure inside the cloud becomes very low. Now, this low pressure pulls in air from around the cloud. Now, air then moves faster and faster. Now, the cloud takes the shape of a funnel spinning around in a circle. Now, when the tip of a funnel touches the ground, it is now a tornado. Now, the tip can carve through streets and buildings and its wind can lift and carry trees, cars, and pieces of homes. That's dangerous. Now, a tornado is an example of cyclone. Now, cyclone 
is a storm with low pressure at its center and spinning winds. Now, a tropical cyclone is low pressure and that forms in the tropics over the seas and oceans. Now, a thunderstorm over the ocean can become a tropical storm. Now, what is a tropical storm? A tropical storm has spinning winds with low pressure at the center. The low pressure pulls in water vapor from the ocean, and then it pulls in air from around the storm. Now, the tropical storm also can become a hurricane if the cyclone has sustained winds of 74 meters per hour or greater. Wait, you might be confused about these three terms. Cyclones, typhoons, and hurricanes all mean the same thing. The name only varies according to its location. Hurricanes are tropical storms that form over North Atlantic Ocean and Northeast Pacific. Cyclones are formed over the South Pacific and in the Indian Ocean, while typhoons are formed over the Northwest Pacific Ocean. That's why here in our country, we mostly hear typhoon rather than cyclones or hurricanes. Now, a hurricane is a very large spinning storm with winds over 117 kilometers or 73 miles per hour. This is spiral spinning clouds with a pole, or we call this as the eye or the center. Now, the fastest winds and heaviest rains are near the eye. Now, inside the eye, you would experience calmness. That's why sometimes when we are inside the storm, you might not feel its wind or even its rain because we are in the eye of the storm. Now, the winds can also make a storm surge. Now, what is this storm surge? A storm surge is a rise in the tide of the ocean around the hurricane. A storm surge can flood a coast. Oh no! Now, aside from storm surge, typhoons which bring heavy rain is also a severe weather. It can cause flooding if the rainwater cannot soak into the ground or drain away fast enough. Rain and flooding can cause landslides and mudslides. Now, rainy weather is not always caused by tropical cyclone or thunderstorm. A monsoon is a seasonal wind that can also bring heavy rain. Monsoons usually happen here in Southeast Asia. Now, the humid southwest monsoon or habaga could be made stronger with a low pressure center that often develops in the southeast of the Philippines. Now, this low pressure joins with and strengthens the southwest monsoon. Having absorbed much water vapor from the ocean, the southwest monsoon may bring heavy rains to the Philippines. Now, during November, the northeast monsoon, or Amihan, starts to occur. Amihan is a cool and dry northeast wind coming from Siberia and China and blows down to the southeast Asia. Now, in tropical regions like the Philippines, the northeast and southeast trade winds flow toward the equator. Where the winds meet, a narrow zone is called the Intertropical Convergence Zone or the ITCZ. Now, this moves north or south of the equator with summer season. Now, in other cold countries, fog can also be severe weather. If it is thick enough to limit a vision beyond a fourth of a mile, this can be dangerous. Now, this ground fog forms when warm air near the ground cools after sunset. Infection fog forms when warm air is pushed by wind over cool land or water. Now, all of the said weather disturbances can really affect us. The destructive effects of typhoon include flooding in cities and countryside, now, flash floods with denuded mountains, erosions, and landslides, and even destruction of property could occur. Now, to minimize these destructive effects of typhoon, we must be alert to typhoon signals and observe the necessary precautions. Now, here are some reminders on what to do before 
during and after the typhoon. So before the typhoon, remember, one, listen to the forecast, keep tuned in to the radio and television, or read the newspaper for the latest weather reports. Do not trust rumors. Two, examine your house and repair if there are unstable parts. Three, keep some windows and doors open to lessen the impact of winds on the house. Four, store an adequate supply of food and clean water. Prepare foods that need not to be cooked. Five, have the following ready. Your medicine, flashlights, and candles in case of power cut off. Six, know the evacuation centers of your town. Know beforehand where you can move to safety in case of an emergency. See to it that the things you will need in the evacuation center are ready for use. 7. Airplanes and ships cancel their trips in the event of a typhoon. So cancel any plans to travel when there is a typhoon. Fisher fox are also advised not to go out to the sea. So do not cross a swollen river where many have drowned doing this. 8. Secure domesticated animals in a safe place. During the typhoon, we have to remember 1. Stay inside your house or building 2. Do not try to walk around There may be live electric wires and dangerous objects carried by the wind Other sources of danger are open manholes, falling trees or electric poles, and broken window glasses Snakes and other dangerous creatures also come out of hiding during floods, so watch out for them Three, do not wade through flood waters to avoid contracting diseases. Four, cover your glass windows and appliances with cloth to avoid splinters when they break. Five, wear additional clothing to avoid catching a cold or other respiratory diseases. Six, always keep yourself updated with the latest weather report. Seven, put important appliances and belongings on high ground. And after the typhoon, you have to 1. Protect yourself from disease outbreaks, which are always expected after a typhoon. Be sure to boil your drinking water, cook your food very well. Vegetables and fruits should always be washed very well, so before they are cooked or eaten, make sure that they are clean. And practice wholesome health habits. 2. Repair all damage in your house. Clean your house and surroundings very well. And three, check those places where water can be accumulated to avoid possible mosquito breeding. So that's it everyone. Thank you for joining me in a fun and wonderful adventure here in Fun and Learning with Teacher Danny. And don't forget that weather disturbances are naturally occurring in the earth. So we have to be reminded of all the things that you have learned today for us to be safe against this disturbance. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, and subscribe to this channel. Bye-bye!